Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is exposing logic apps as MCP servers using Azure API management. Let's go. All right, so why is this episode important? So as you've probably noticed, and hopefully you have, Logic Apps is heavily investing in Agentic AI through the ability to create agents uh, through the use of a, a new feature we call the Agent Loop. Now, there's a couple of adjacent topics that are extremely hot these days that do enrich agent building experiences and also agent capabilities. And those are A2A, the agent to agent protocol, and then also MCP model context protocol. Now, we as a team are investing in both of these areas, but I wanted to create an initial video to start educating Logic App customers and partners on these different concepts and what this actually means inside of Logic Apps. All right, so just some definitions, because sometimes these get sort of intermixed, but A2A refers to agent to agent communication. Uh, this is an open protocol designed to enable interoperability and communication across autonomous or semi-autonomous agents. Now, MCP, think of it more as tools. It's a, also an open protocol, and it's designed to standardize how AI applications especially those powered by large language models, can interact with external systems like APIs, tools, workflows, and data sources. So just to you know, create this visually, perhaps we have uh, a solution that includes two agents, and maybe this is a university and they want to build an agentic solution. So they may have a need for an enrollment agent to be able to communicate with a financial aid agent. And so this represents a multi-agent architecture. And we can see that there's an interaction that takes place here across different messages. And in this case, we can see that the enrollment agent's gonna start a conversation and basically ask a question in the form of a prompt saying, is candidate number one, two, three eligible for financial aid? And in this case, what'll happen is that message gets passed, history is persisted, and that agent will go ahead and do that work and then send a response back. And so this is very much in the context of agent to agent communication. Now, if we think about MCP, we could take that same architecture where we still have an enrollment agent and it's gonna to talk to the financial agent over A to A, but as part of the financial aid agent, it might need access to tools. So those tools could include a credit check, eligibility check, program check, and those could be implemented in a variety of different ways. But by being able to describe and expose those over a common protocol, this allows those tools to easily be plugged into an agent. In this case, it would be the financial aid agent. So here's just a diagram. This just comes from modelcontextprotocol.io just kind of describes this a little bit where you can go ahead and have an MCP client. Now that could be an IDE, that could be an agent um, and other sort of tools. And then what you would go ahead and consume an MCP server over the MCP protocol and that could live across a variety of servers. So that could be uh, on your own computer or that could also be over the internet. And then behind those MCP servers, there's going to be communication over a variety of protocols to the end repository. So that could be an API, that could be a database, that could be messaging queues and services. So this is just a visualization of how that looks. So what's the role of Azure API management? So we can go ahead and use API management and, and I think you're gonna see more and more of this, this integration with API Center as a way to both catalog these different MCPs, but then also to provide a runtime for the MCPs as well. And so this diagram looks a little bit like the other one where you could have a data source, an API, and you want to be able to expose that, maybe it's already exposed through REST, and you want to be able to basically introduce an MCP wrapper on top of that, but you don't want to sort of build that yourself. Well, you can use API management to take care of this functionality for you. So you can go ahead and select different APIs and then let API management go ahead and expose those APIs 
as MCP servers. And naturally, it'll take care of all of the protocol and the handshakes that are required in order to get that implemented. So it actually saves you a ton of time, especially if you've already built all of these different capabilities out, why would you want to reinvent the wheel from that perspective? And so that's what we're gonna focus on here today as a way to go ahead and take, in this case, a logic app, because at the end of the day, that is exposed you know, over HTTP, and we can go ahead and wrap an MCP server around that experience as well. Now, before we get too far into the, the demo and stuff here, you might have a question, okay, what about logic apps and MCP? So there's a few things that are coming down the pipeline here. Uh, so what I'm showing you today, you can do, uh, you know, go ahead and do this today. It is exposing logic apps through API management and basically API management will expose an MCP server. So you can go ahead and do that today in public preview. Now, we are working on exposing logic apps directly as MCP servers. If you were at Ignite in June, uh, Divya did demo, demo, demonstrate this. And so this will be coming up very, very soon. Uh, so do look for more information on our blog. I will have a video on the channel once this is available, but that is something that uh, is just around the corner. And then also look for some additional experiences where we've provided some integration with some other Microsoft services as well as a way to go ahead and simplify the ability to create these. So keep your eyes open for those. That'll be a little bit further out, but uh, definitely actively in development as well. All right, so let's talk just a little bit about API management here. Now, this feature is in public preview. It was announced at build. So it's, it's just kind of like five, six weeks old at this point. Now you do need to enable the feature using a feature flag. So there's a specific URL. I'll include this in the video description, but basically you can see that there's a, a tag here, you know, that's gonna basically unlock the specific feature. Now, if you are using V1 of Azure API Management, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and change your service updates to use the AI Gateway early version that's gonna unlock this capability. If you are using V2 already, so API management, say standard V2, uh, you won't have to do anything around this update group. You will still need to go ahead and use the feature flag here. Now, I initially did this in V1 and then I came back and did this in V2. When I did this in V1, it did take at least two hours uh, for those updates to take place. Uh, so do be a little bit patient, but if you're using V2, then no worries, you should be, you should be good. Now, we're also going to go ahead and use VS Code here. And in this case, we're just gonna use VS Code as a MCP client because we wanna be able to go ahead and interact with our MCP server. So this is one of those things where this was enabled by default for me, but something to go ahead and check would be to ensure that MCP support is enabled in VS Code. And so you can go ahead and just basically go search for this uh, setting. There's more uh, information available at this URL. I'll include that in the video description as well. Uh, then the next thing we're going to need to do is if you haven't enabled the API management extension in VS Code, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do that as well. And once we've gone ahead and configured our Logic App to be an MCP server, we're then gonna go wanna go ahead and follow these specific instructions that allow us to essentially register that MCP server inside of VS Code. And we're gonna go ahead and use a command from the command palette that's gonna help us go do that. All right, so let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo here. All right, so first things first, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and have our Logic App. Now, in this case, my Logic App is gonna go ahead and query Dataverse to see if there's any return histories by a customer through using their email. Now, I'm using a get here, and I don't have a message body naturally in order for that to take place. And when I perform this particular query, I'm going to go ahead and use the queries parameter that is part of the trigger itself. And then I'm gonna go ahead and indicate that I'm looking for the email query parameter. Then this is just gonna go ahead and return a response. 
All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Now, in this case, we do have our query parameters. So we'll go ahead and set those. Then we'll go ahead and click the run button. And then here we've got some records that are being returned. So life is good from that perspective. Now let's flip over to API management and we need to go ahead and construct an API. Now I'm using Logic App Standard here. And so I've had to do some of this work manually, but I basically have a get operation that has been exposed. I've established a query parameter. So if we go ahead and click on this, we go to query, we've got email and then a description and a sample value. And then if we go back to our, our policy, I've got, hold on. I've got just a policy that's going to do a backend service uh, URL rewrite. So basically I'm just going to go ahead and call my logic app and I'm just using the named values just to make this a little bit more portable where I've got like the base URL, then I've got basically the, um, the path. And then I have the secret, which is stored as a, as a secret in APIM. Now, what I should be able to do is go ahead and run this. And so here I'm in the test tool. I've got a product set up. I can go ahead and hit send and I should see that same response. So those are things you need to make sure are working before you try this stuff. Otherwise things get far more complicated from that perspective. Now, because I've used the feature flag, right? So we can see that right here, we've got the feature flag being used. I can go into this MCP server entry that is now available for me. And I can go ahead and click a new MCP server and I can go ahead and do that by selecting the API and the operation. Now, I'm not gonna do that because I've already gone ahead and done it. And when that is in place, I now will have an entry and this entry is going to go ahead and include some configuration. And if we wanted to impose policies, we could go ahead and do that, such as like throttling. Um, those are available to us as well. Now, I didn't do it for the purposes of this use case. Now, what is important uh, are a couple things. Uh, we've got the, if we go back to the MCP servers, we've got the URL. If we want to go ahead and use the SSC uh, protocol, and then also we will need a URL if we want to just go ahead and use the MCP address. And we're going to see that uh, shortly inside of VS Code. But probably the best way to find that value, because this can be a little tricky, is if you just go into the settings and then you're going to see the base URL. So if you go ahead and copy that, that will save you some uh, troubleshooting. Uh, down the road here. All right, so I'm now in VS Code and I don't necessarily need to have a project open. Uh, I can just create a sort of a new workspace and uh, and just start from there. And what we want to do is we want to go into the command palette and if we go in there and we type in MCP, this is where we're going to get the option to add MCP in. And now what you can go ahead and do is provide uh, the HTTP or server sent events, SSE. So you go ahead and do that. This is where you want to go ahead and paste in that URL. And then what you will be asked to go ahead and do is to provide a name for your MCP server. And then you'll see a settings.json file. Now you might be asked if you want to do user or workspace. I just chose user. So the settings are available regardless of, of what uh, workspace I'm in. So use whichever one makes most sense for you. Now, what will happen after the fact is you will see basically these entries and you will need to go ahead and add your API management subscription key. And so that's something where you're gonna have to go get that from API management. So now what you want to do is I've got these running, but you'd want to go ahead and start your MCP server. Now, the one that I'm going to be using is this one called customer return history. And also just be aware of the URL here. So this was that URL that I pulled from API management, but I need to sort of append this dash MCP slash MCP 
for this to go ahead and to work. So with all of this sort of ready to go, I can now go ahead and click on start. And then I should see in this output, like the uh, exchange going back and forth, and we should see that it is now running. Now I'm gonna be in GitHub Copilot, I'm gonna be in agent mode, and now what I can go ahead and do is select the tools that I want to provide access to uh, GitHub Copilot. Now we're gonna see I've got a couple here selected, so you'd wanna make sure that these are selected, and this is the one that I wanna be able to go ahead and call. So, you know, I can just start my conversation by saying hi, and then it should ask me, okay, what do you want to go ahead and do? And I want to say, I want to look up a customer return history by email. Now it's, it knows that there's uh, basically an input that's required. So I can now go ahead and provide that input. And now what it's gonna go ahead and do is invoke the actual MCP server. Now I'm getting prompted for access, right? So if there's some consent that's going on here, which is fine. And now that will be called and we can see that this has been returned some data, uh, which is, is pretty cool. Now, if we flip over to our logic app, there we can just see that it, it just ran. And you know we can now go ahead and step through this as required. But if we head over, we can see that we got our query. So that concludes the demo. And uh, hopefully that gives you an indication of how you can go ahead and expose logic apps today as MCP servers through API management. But as I mentioned before, do look for a native experience just around the corner. But uh, regardless, MCP servers are gonna be super powerful as a way to onboard tools for agents and really Logic Apps being an integration platform with all of our connectors. There's huge value opportunity here for customers to benefit from existing investments in order to go ahead and solve their AI problems. So thanks again, we'll see you soon.